<laughs> shalom, shalom. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jen from Ezekiel Effect Ministries. This is my amazing husband, Daniel. And we are going to read Psalm 115 to you today. Daniel's going to start playing. And then I'm just going to jump in and start reading it. So if you want to grab your Bible, any version that you like, you can follow along. I'm going to be mainly reading from the Passion Translation, um, but also the New King James. So, Cross before me, the world behind. No turning back, raise the banner high. It's not for me, it's all for you. Let the heaven shake and split the sky. Let the people clap their hands and cry. It's not for us, it's all for you. God, glorify your name. Yes, your name alone be glorified, not ours. For you are the one who loves us passionately. And you are faithful and true. Why should the unbelievers mock us? saying, Where is this God of yours? But we know our God rules from the heavens, and he takes delight in all that he does. Not to us, but to your name be the glory. Not to us, but to your name. what they make and their wealth their wealth and their work we're on verse five here it says they idolize what they own and what they make with their hands but these things can't talk to them or answer their prayers their possessions will never satisfy their futile faith in dead idols and dead works can never bring life or meaning to their souls so isn't that like what's happening in the world today? There's so much idolatry. There's so many things in the world that are clamoring for our attention on social media, right? And yet the Lord wants us all to himself. He's a jealous God. He doesn't want us searching after other things other than him. So, yeah. All right, where was I at? It says, blind men can only create blind things. Those deaf to God can only make a deaf image. And a deaf image, I'm just going to read the little footnote. It says here, referring to the idols, the literal Hebrew could be translated with mouths, but they cannot speak, with eyes, but they cannot see, with ears, but they cannot hear, with noses, but they cannot smell, with hands, but they cannot cannot feel with feet but they cannot walk those who make them will become like them and everyone who trusts in them i should be wearing my glasses so i can't see this very well oh, let me grab them yes that's the hebrew the literal translation of the hebrew there all right what verse was i in here it says, dead men can only create dead idols, and everyone who trusts in these powerless dead things will be just like what they worship, powerless and dead. So doesn't that change things if we think about the things that we all worship, and they're dead, and what does that make us, powerless and dead, right? So trust in the Lord, all of his people, we're in verse 9, for he only trusts, for he is the only true hero, the wraparound God who is our shield. Um, so just a quick story. A little bit um, a little bit ago, we were talking about our dog Snoopy, one of the three chihuahuas that you've seen pictures of. Um, so he actually has a hurt leg right now. We were getting out of the car, I think it was a day or two ago, and he was trying to jump out and he fell. And 
I don't know if he landed on his back or his leg. I'm not really sure, but he must have injured it because he has the last probably 24 hours or so not really been able to walk very much. So I've been kind of pushing him around and carrying him around and we've prayed over him and we've pleaded the blood. We've declared that he's healed, but he's still, he's still struggling. He's doing better. Um, but I had a point where I got to earlier today where I just, I was really sad and I was laying down with him and I just told Daniel, you know, I just wanted to call the vet and I don't want him to be suffering. I don't want him to be in pain. And so Daniel was just telling me a story. Do you want to tell me, tell him the story, the John G. Lake story? Um, just summarize. But it changed my mind and my heart posture but you know the summary of it is basically just trusting in the Lord that's the summary of it so do you want to summarize it well there's a lot to it um but basically Apostle John G. Lake had the biggest healing ministry since Jesus Christ and he lived about a hundred years ago um and he taught some very difficult things um and I've been wrestling with those things over the years, but I found them to be true. Like when you trust in Jesus, like the cross was enough, the cross is sufficient and he becomes our healer and we become Christ on the world. So as he is, so are we on earth. And so he was saying, if you could see Jesus go to a pharmacy and get some medication for a migraine, like could he be the savior of the world well no like he couldn't he can't even save himself like how can he save us so it's really a test of faith then to say all right i have christ in me christ really cares for me he cares for this dog that he's created can i trust the process can i trust that the prayer of faith because we prayed over him in jesus name and we anointed him in obedience to the word and I trust that God will be faithful to his word, that he will heal uh, in response to the prayer of faith, which heals the sick. Um, or do we run to the world and and get their their healing, which that's been a thing since, since man has been civilized. Like we've had doctors ever since Egypt, but do we trust him? Do we trust in the blood? Is the blood mm -hmm. enough? And um, I believe it is. I believe we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living and that the, God will be faithful to his word. Even if we're faithless, he remains faithful for he cannot deny himself. So we're waiting for the manifestation of it. And that's the, that's the difficulty of faith. Am I able to wait for the manifestation of what is true in the spirit? Or am I gonna lose faith and run to something else. And it's very difficult because uh, it's a test. But, but as the apostle Peter says, I rejoice that the testing of your faith produces endurance so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Yeah, and it's not easy. And we're not saying that doctors don't have a purpose. We're not saying don't ever go to the doctor. We're not saying that. We're just saying always trust the Lord and always ask the Lord what to do. In this situation, we just felt like we needed to wait on the Lord. And Daniel had more faith than I did because I'm a little closer to the situation. I'm the mama bear for my dogs and my kids. And, you know, it's harder for me to be objective, but that's where I think the Lord is meeting us today. And, and maybe he's meeting you there. Maybe there's an area of your life where you're feeling like there's a test of faith and it doesn't have to be medical. It could be anything where you're waiting on the Lord. We're waiting on the Lord for financial things. We're waiting on the Lord for housing. Um, you may be waiting on some of those things too. I'm waiting on the Lord, you know, we're waiting for prodigals to come home. So there might be a lot of things um, going on in your life that you're feeling like you're really needing to trust the Lord. And today definitely was a test of faith for me because I did not expect, I just did not expect to to experience what I was experiencing and 
you know, I got worried. And I think sometimes when we start to worry or we have fear or anxiety, then we start to doubt. And it wasn't that I doubted God. I just, I didn't want Snoopy to be in pain. And so I wondered, could we do anything else? And I was asking the Lord, you know, could we do anything else? You know, can I call and get some advice, you know, on what else to do? So anyway, I think you just got to seek the Lord, but that's kind of the message that I wanted to share is just transparently, you know, we're, we're struggling at times. Um, you know, everybody struggles at times. I'm just going to speak for myself. So when we trust with, when we trust the Lord, um, we know he's the one and only true hero, the wraparound God who is our shield. And then it goes on here in verse 10 and it says you his priests trust in the lord for he is the only true hero god wrapped around us as his shield so it's repeating pretty much the same thing and then verse 11 it says yes all his lovers who bow down before him trust in the lord for he is our only true hero god wrapped around us as our shield so why would the lord repeat this through the author of this psalm like three different times literally almost word for word why would he repeat that because it's important right he wants us to understand that when we bow down before him when we trust him and we put him as the center of our life he is the one and only he is the only true hero and he's wrapped around us like a shield can you get an image of that? Just God wrapping around us. He is our protector. He's our shield. He's everything. We talk about Psalm 91. You know, we run into the Lord's pinions. He's like a big mama bird and he wraps us in. It's like a big shield protecting us. So then it goes on to say in verse 12, the Lord will never forget us in need. He will bless us indeed. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron, his priest. So not only is he not going to forget us, he's going to bless us. So we, we're going to just wait. I'm going to declare that right now. We wait expectantly. We are expectant, Lord, that you're going to bless us. You're going to bless our family, our kids, our pets, our finances, our ministries, our jobs. Whatever we have, Lord, we thank you that you're going to bless us indeed. And then verse 13, it says, in Jesus' name, and then it says, Yes, he will bless his devoted lovers who bow before him. No matter who they are, God himself will fill you with more. Blessing, more blessings upon blessings will be heaped upon you and your children from the maker of heaven and earth. So did you ever look at it like that, that the Lord is going to just keep blessing us? I mean, it's it's kind of a crazy concept if you grew up like I did, where you thought the Lord was far away and you thought he was kind of like this authoritarian dictator type guy and you were always in trouble. That's how I grew up. And so when you remember when that song, The Blessing, came out, Elevation Worship, do you guys remember that? I remember hearing that song and I was, I don't even know what year that was. It was like somewhere around COVID. Well, I still must have had some shame from the past about all that Old, those old religious you know or just outdated beliefs that I had but I remember that that was a really hard song for me to take in I mean the Lord did a lot of healing in my heart did he do healing in your heart through that song he did for me um and we say we say the Aaron the ironic blessing over each other every day which comes from numbers you know may the Lord bless you uh, may his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, that one. So we speak that over each other every night before we go to sleep. But that's where that song came from, um, Numbers 23, I think, 23 or 26. Um, but anyway, I just remember when that song came out and it was really healing. So um, not only is he a good God, but he wants to bless us. I mean, I just couldn't wrap my brain around that. Like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> and that that helped eradicate the spirit of religion. That was like a huge, a huge turning point for me. So anyway, verse 16, it says, The heavens belong to our God. They are his alone. But he has given us the earth and put us in charge. So isn't that why we were taking taking authority last week when the hurricanes were happening? We we're in charge of the earth. If there's witchcraft, if there's other stuff going on, it's not from the Lord. 
So we were taking authority and that's why things weren't as bad as they were supposed to be. Nothing absolutely happened here. It was a lot lighter on the Gulf Coast, Coast, Coast thankfully, than it should have been um, if we hadn't been praying. So thank you for all of you who were praying for Florida. It says 17, dead people cannot praise the Lord, but we can. Those who sink into the silence of the grave can no longer give glory to God, but we can. So let's praise the Lord and let it go on forever. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So when we're alive in Christ, we can praise the Lord. When we're living for God, when we're living for Jesus, we can praise the Lord. If we're dead in our trespasses, if that, you know, that means if we are still living in sin, if we're still living in unbelief, if we're still, you know, not able to forgive ourselves or others, if we're held in bondage and captivity because of things from the past or generational curses, the Lord wants to heal us. He wants to heal you. He doesn't want us to live that way. He wants us to live in freedom. He wants us to be content in all circumstances, just like Paul. Paul and Silas, when they were in prison, um, he doesn't want us to be in bondage because Jesus dying on the cross, his blood paid the total price for, for everything that's happened. Everything that's happened to us, everything we've done, the Lord has already paid the price and he's already shed his blood for us. So we're going to sing um, at least one more song, maybe two, um, and then I want to pray for everybody and just kind of close this out. But this, I also want to say this is another psalm um three of three of six psalms that go with passover i think it actually says this is the third of six psalms for passover and the first half of this one it warns against the idolatry we talked about that um, and we can actually make idols from god's gifts right especially those of money sex and power so the psalmist describes the foolishness and futility of following idols. So we want to ask the Lord to have the fear of the Lord, because we know that's the beginning of knowledge. And we also want to thank, thank the Lord for being our wraparound shield. So, yeah. So we got a song for us. Did you want to sing the book? We can sing it, yeah. You guys can sing it too. It's a good one. And I know you know it. <laughs> Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you.
Jesus. We just bless your name. We praise you. We give you all the honor and all the glory tonight, Jesus. We say thank you for what you've done on the cross. We say thank you for your blood that has healed us, that has protected us, that has saved us, that has covered all of our transgressions. And we lay them all before you today, Jesus. Anything that's still running around in our mind tonight, Lord, we just release it all to the cross. We just say your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We say, have your way, Jesus. We thank you for renewing our faith, for restoring hope where it's been lost. We thank you for forgiveness. And where we still are holding on to doubt or worry, anxiety, fear, unforgiveness, bitterness, we just repent for holding on to things, knowingly or unknowingly. We just lay it down today. Lord, help us to be willing. Even when we feel stubborn at times, Lord, help us to be willing. And may we experience that freedom. And I just speak freedom over each person listening to this prayer call tonight, Lord. I thank you for freedom for them, for their families. I thank you for breaking generational curses. And I thank you for restoring what was lost. And I thank you for multiplication blessings in their finances, in their health, in their emotions, in their marriages, in their families, with their children, Lord. We thank you for your blessings upon blessings. And we give you all the praise and all the glory today, Lord. We love you so much. We can't do it without you. So we bless you today, Jesus. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that comforts us, who guides us, who nudges us. We know we're never alone. So we give you all the glory today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank you for that beautiful music, Daniel. Thank you for joining us. If you would hit the like button and the subscribe, we'd appreciate it. You can get this out to more people. And until next time... Shalom, shalom.